Hey guys, today we're going to go over the top 7 best magic cards of all time. And yeah, let's go ahead and begin. Number 7, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Again, Jace was a card that was so powerful, he was banned. It was either play Jace or lose. I mean, I played uh, probably my most professional magic when Jace was the card to beat. Um, very difficult to beat the card. Uh, and the legendary rule was very different. So if you were on the play and you got to turn four and they didn't have a counter spell, then you pretty much won the game. Number six, Force of Will. Force of Will is a extremely important card and legacy, mainly because without it, people would just do broken stuff all the time. With it, people do less broken stuff. I cannot imagine a legacy format without Force of Will. And it would surprise me uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it was just overrun by really powerful combo spells. Next, Time Twister. So Time Twister, we're now getting into the power nine. I did put the moxes together. Uh, Time Twister is each player shuffles his or her hand and then graveyard into his or her library and then draws seven cards. Uh, essentially, if you're playing the right deck, which you should be, this is draw seven cards for you and kill your opponent off as fast as you know, you can. Very, very powerful card. Time Walk. One in a blue. Extra turn. <laughs> um, not much I need to see here. Uh, not much I need to say here, except it is just that good. Extra turns are very good, especially if they cost only this much. The typical extra turn costs five, at least five. So for Time Walk to cost two and Tempo, this is the ultimate Tempo card. Next, Ancestral Recall. So Recall was from the set where it was Healing Slav, Dark Ritual, Lightning Bolt, um, Giant Growth, and then this card. Yeah, I think Blue did okay. Uh, this card draws you free cards at instant speed. So not only, I mean, essentially this costs five now. If you wanted to play this card, it costs five. So for it to cost one is absolutely insane. And for you to have that much card advantage at instant speed, crazy, crazy card. Now we get to the moxes. Now the moxes are very interesting. I grouped them together, although some moxes are better than other moxes in my opinion, and some colors need moxes more than other ones. The moxes are very good, and the problem with how they designed the game originally was when they designed the game, they had a choice to make. They, the choice could have been we should make all of our valuable cards the mana cards, or we can make all of our valuable cards the creatures, the planeswalkers, and the sorceries. Well, the choice was made from the dual lands, etc., that the land base, as well as anything that produces mana, would be extremely expensive, which is different from other games. Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't have mana base, to my understanding. Uh, Pokemon, you have special energy, but I don't think that gives you that much of an advantage. Having an extra mana is a huge advantage. Like, it's not even close. Which brings us to our number one card, Black Lotus. Um, there's no question Black Lotus, given its price and its historical impact, it's just overall history is insane. It is a card that is better than Dark Ritual in every aspect, and Dark Ritual is banned in every format, essentially. Black Lotus is one of those cards that I look at and I say to myself, huh, I wondered why no one felt like this card was not good even back in that Odin days you could play like a Shivian dragon or something extremely fast but nowadays you can just do totally broken stuff with this card uh Black Lotus is the iconic card of Magic the Gathering and right now and it will continue to be I really don't see a card replacing this card 